I thought I saw somebody say a nasty word. I thought I saw somebody say a nasty word this morning. Oh. Oh, they were just saying Alabama versus Auburn. I'm about to say, we don't say that other Alabama word. Auburn, we don't say Auburn around here. Yep, Iron Bowl today. Yo, listen, I'm super excited. I got on my tour tongue of my lower jersey. I'm ready. I'm ready, suited and booted. Got my Bama shoes. Listen, listen. This ain't a game over here. We official, bro. We official over here. I'm ready. I'm super hyped. I'm super hyped, yo. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, yo. If you new inside of the chat, yo, tell people where you're from. Um, drop your city, you know, because this is a great opportunity to network for people that are here for the first time. Indies in the house. That's what's up. Tremelo action is awesome. Appreciate that. Listen, I try to make sure my guitars feel a certain way when I'm playing. I, I don't just tell y'all, you know what I'm saying? I do the same thing, same philosophy for myself. Decatur in the house, New York in the house, Seattle, what's up? What's up? That's what's up. Trying to see this Tyson fight. Yo, I, I want to see the Tyson fight, but I think I want to see uh, Nate Robinson and what's the other dude, Jack? I want to see them go at it because like they were talking a lot of smack. You know what I'm saying? Reminds me like when you're back in high school, you want to... Everybody come out to school. You want to meet up so you can see the fight. You know what I'm saying? Columbia, Maryland in the house. That's what's up. Beham. Yo, 205. Listen, I'm from Birmingham. So 205. I love that. I love that. I love that. So this morning, it's just conversations. Listen, we're just going to talk about guitars. We're going to talk about um, networking. We're going to talk about um, gear. We're going to have questions about the industry. If you're trying to figure out how to like, you know, when you're playing records or how, to, how does it work? You know, if you're trying to do session work or if you're, we talked about acoustics yesterday. Um, so I just want to, you know, take this time out to kind of talk to you guys and connect with you guys outside of me just having my guitar and teaching you. Now, I love teaching, but it's good for sometimes for you to know who you're learning from or who you're hearing the different philosophies and ideologies. So, you know, that's a real good thing. And if you got questions, you can ask me questions. Man, the site is really cool, laid out really well. I appreciate that. I was on it all last night, even as an intermediate player. That's what's up. Listen, I want to try to make sure I have enough information there and constantly keep adding stuff to keep you guys engaged, to help you grow, to help you learn, to help you unpack, to help you learn some things that you haven't or some stuff that you forgot to bring it back to your memory. That's the whole point of Carrie's Camp. So just to read that, I love that, man. I love that. I'm glad I signed up. I'm glad you did too, man. Welcome to the camp. So that's what it's all about. Um, what was the progression you were playing uh, with Phil's and that turnaround. So I was in the key of D. I was playing, uh, what was I playing? I think I was playing, so four, three. So four, three, two, right? So I was playing that G major seven, F minor seven, then B minor seven, then I was doing this uh, A or B over A. Take my big L. Over that E, right? So that's E over B, so that's it.
So that's what I was doing. So hopefully you like that one. You know, it's just a cool little change that you can do. Um, I mainly do stuff like that for when I'm warming up. You know what I mean? So when I'm warming up or when I'm in sound check, I'll do some kind of cool, like, you know, luscious chords that'll make everybody be in there and be like, ooh, that boy can play. You know what I mean? That's that's one of my like ear candies. I like to try to tickle people's ears when I'm playing, when I'm setting up, I'm getting ready. Uh, let's go look at some of these questions. Um, it says, okay, I told about the progression. Uh, what type of humbucker do you have in the bridge? So that is a Lambertone cream. No, that's the, uh, not the cream, grinder. So that's the Lambertone grinder um, that pickup that I have in the humbucker. Hello, hello. Can I get a shout out? Sure, Edward. Yo, showing love to Edward Martinez. Glad that you on this live, bro. Hope you're having a great Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Um, we got people for here from Brazil, man. That's what's up. Yo, showing love from Brazil. That's what's up. Yo, yo I'm trying to get to Brazil like next year, 2021. I'm trying to go to Brazil to do a clinic. Can somebody help me set that up? Can somebody help me set that up? I want to come to Brazil. I want to do a clinic. I want it to be bananas. You understand what I'm saying? So y'all help me up. Y'all help me out. Um, Lambert terms are on sale right now. Yeah. I, I mean, if they're on sale right now, I'm telling you guys like, so I have triple shots. The, um, the two pickups before that, and then in the humbucker, I have a Lambertone. They're all Lambertones, but I have the grinder. Now, my other strat, I have the triple shots and I have the crema. Now, I'm a huge fan of the crema. I like the tones for the crema more than I like the grinder. So, but I wanted to have, I wanted to have both. So, just in case, depending on the type of gig, I could have both. You know what I mean? Um, sweet, sweet, sweet. Not sure why I find it harder to play the strat. Um, than an ESG. It just depends, man. You know what? Like, you may just be set up more prone. Like, I tend to like more of a, a strat like body. I like Jazz Masters right now more than, let's say, I like, uh, I mean, I love Les Paul, but let's just say I like it more than I like a Les Paul. You know what I mean? So, when I'm doing session work, I, I typically use a Les Paul because I like that thicker tone and it, it just converts well. It sounds better, it translates well better on, on tracks. So, don't be mad. You know, you like what you like. You know what I'm saying? It is what it is. I love that CD that you posted on IG last night. Yeah, Gospel Chop. So like for those that don't know, um, I work um, with this label, uh, Music Box uh, Record Group, and we put out a single yesterday, Roxanne. So this is just a remix of the song by The Police way back in the day. Sting was singing his band. Uh, we made it feel more R&B. So you should definitely check it out. You can find it on all platforms. You can find it on... Um, uh, Spotify, Apple, Google. Um, so it's Roxanne. Um, yeah, so that's the name of the song. It's Roxanne. So like, if you want to know the actual, I think the actual name, I think it's by uh, SG God and Saeed. Saeed used to be on the four way back in the day, like season one. Um, so it's super talented. So appreciate that love. Uh, Montevallo area. That's what's up. I used to live in Alabaster. I used to live in Alabaster. Uh, can you let us know the name of the chord progression you was just using? So I just said the chord progression. So it's the G major, F sharp minor, um, sometimes a B minor and sometimes an E minor. It just depends on how it is, how it's phrased. I appreciate what you do, man. You're a national treasure. I appreciate that, Tyler. I'm stuck in a guitar rut. What do I need to do to practice? Nathaniel, if you're stuck in a guitar rut, you should definitely so sign up and join Carrie's camp, right? Help me. I mean, help. let me help you really unpack and how to show you how to get out of that rut, right? If you don't have any kind of guidance, sometimes it's really tough. So if you can join right now for, we're, I'm running a special until Monday, right? And um, you can join for six months for $97. And you've, if you haven't heard other people, if the campers are in here, let him know like how much of a value that you can get for just signing. We had a guy sign up last night who was on it, who was an intermediate player. Like he was on Carrie's camp all last night. So the proof is in the pudding. So all you need to do is go to carriescamp.com. That is K-E-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P.com slash 100. You have until money to jo join right now for six months for at $97. Okay, uh, let's go back and look at some of this other stuff. Yo, Carrie, I, I have a semi holly body. I want to put a Bixby on it, on the trim. But some people are saying it's not a good idea. Yo, um, that's... Listen, do you? I put a Bixby on my Les Paul and Cass was like, yo, you shouldn't put a Bixby on Les Paul. I'm telling you. That, you know what? Sean, I'm going to show you what I can tell you. I'm telling you, like, the Bixby that I have on my Les Paul is phenomenal. And I use this record, I use this guitar on a lot of records. So 
If that's what you're feeling, do what you feel, bro. Because people will tell you all the time, and it's not their guitar. They don't have to live with it. So if you love it and you're really passionate about it, I say do the research, listen to other guitars that have that set up, and just see if that's what you want. I'm telling you right now, people used to tell me all the time, used to clown me. Like, why would you want to put a Bixby on a, on a Les Paul? I put a Bixby on a Les Paul, and that thing can sing. So let me go get that guitar for you real quick, and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. Here we go. Look. Look, you understand? Listen, I'm going to tune this bad boy up and then y'all can hear. Like, listen, I love this guitar. So I'm telling you, if they, you, your desire is to put a Bixby on your guitar, man, do you. Do you. All right. Let me go back and let's see. Uh, you don't use stock pickups in any of your guitars? No, that's not true. Like, so in my Sir guitars, I use stock pickups. In my PRS, I use stock pickups. Um, but my, my, Lamber, I, my Lambertones are in my... They're in this guitar, the trip, the Cremas are in this guitar. Um, they're also in my two strats. And um, my Eastman has Seymour Duncan's in it. But yeah, I mean, so I do use stock pickups, but I like after a period of time, I, like your tone, your ear changes, so you want to shift it. So you're gonna make a sound and feel a certain kind of way. All right, uh, let's get it, let's get it, let's get it. Um Like if it wasn't made with it already. No, this, this Les Paul didn't have it. I literally had this installed. This Les Paul did not have a Bixby on it. I literally had it installed. And people thought that I was crazy for doing that. And I was like, bruh, I'm trying to tell y'all, once I get this thing right and I get it set up the right way and I have a guy set up, like it's about to be a game changer. And it has definitely been a game changer. All the records that I've used this bad boy on, people will tell you. Matter of fact, the record that I did yesterday, that I dropped yesterday, um, that you know somebody was asking me about, the Roxanne song, I use this this particular guitar, so I'm trying to tell you, like, it's a game changer. Let me get tuned up real quick. Let me go back and answer some more questions before I decide to play something for y'all real quick. All right, let's go back through and see. I know I missed a couple things. All right, let's look. Let's look and see. Um, please tell us who are some of your musical influences and who are you listening to nowadays? Some of my musical influences are Spanky Alford, Eric Walls, Mark Letiri, Tim Stewart, and who I'm listening to these days. Honestly, I'm not really listening to anybody. Um, Unless I'm working out. And so if I'm working out, then what I'll do, I'll go to Spotify and I'll just put on a random playlist, right? Usually like pop workout music or gospel workout music. That's just what I do. Um, any hints on upcoming songs, uh, Music Soul Child or Raphael Sadiq? All right, Guy Miller. <laughs> What's up, Carrie? Thanks for what you do, man. I appreciate that, Savage. Um, just picked up a Fender Jaguar. Sweet. Yo, what color is it? Um, how do you go about your lessons on Tuesday? Like, what do you teach us? So what I do is um, I have a staff, I have a team, and they usually tell me like, yo, you should do lessons like this, or I will listen and see the feedback that you guys drop, not necessarily here, but in just most of the comments, and then that's what will help shape what I teach. You know what I'm saying? I have so many lessons that I already have in the queue that I've been doing for a long time, so I can stay ahead of the curve and not have to work overtime especially with my daughter being here and she really needs, you know, assistance. So I try, I try to be proactive um, in that regard. Tuning in from the UK. I just joined Carrie's camp yesterday. That's what's up, man. Yo, welcome to the camp. Welcome to the camp. Sick. <laughs> Laugh out loud. Carrie is a beast. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, sweet. I have a question. I have a chord progression, C minor, A flat, F minor, B minor, and C minor, how do I apply? Listen, I, let's get it. So if you wanna learn how to do that, you should definitely join Carrie's Camp because I will teach you how to do all that stuff. Um, but I, I'm not gonna use this particular time in the platform to teach you that because everybody else doesn't wanna learn that. So I'm trying to help everybody else out. What are your opinion about flows, flow, Floyd Rose bridges? I have only used them a couple of times and honestly, um, they sound okay, but it's just not really the type of guitar that I would play. So my opinion will be kind of slightly different. What's your opinion about tellies? Tellies are cool. Like you just got to know how to play a telly. You know, a telly is not as forgiving 
as other guitars because there's only three selectors. And so you really gonna have to know what you're doing to kind of navigate around the telly. Um, exercises I can use to develop my ears. So if you want to develop your ears, go to carriescamp.com slash 100. And you should sign up to become a camper because we have courses on ear training. That's super important. So I'm glad you asked that question. Poke the bear, laugh out loud. Funny, funny. Uh, the Fender Jaguar is black. Ooh, with the turtle pit guard. Ooh, I bet that's sexy. Oh, man, that's what's up. What up from Richmond, Virginia? That's where D'Angelo is from. That's what's up. Can I play R&B and flamenco guitar using the chords with uh, less fingers? Samuel, that's, you possibly could, man. You possibly could. That would be something that you probably have to work on to develop that style. I will join. Let's get it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm in the process of um, routing out my USB uh, PV Telecaster to install a floating tremolo. That's what's up. How do you like um, and use Boss ME80s? Uh, do you like it? So Walter, I'm currently using the Boss ME80 now. Right? All right, so let me let me let me lower this so you guys can see what I'm playing with this guitar right now. You know what I'm saying? So I want you guys to understand so y'all can see. <laughs> Love the Boss ME80, right? So now I'm gonna kick into like one of my favorite overdrives using the Boss ME80. This thing can kick butt. So let me let me put on a little track so y'all can hear. Okay. Gonna stop right there. Listen, listen. People that be sleeping on the boss in the 80s, you just gotta set it up. If you set it up the right way, I'm telling you, it's a game changer. I use it for all of my recordings, especially here at the house. When I have to do a session here at the house, which is usually almost every day or every other day, or at least two to three times a week, I am cutting amazing records here in this house. Like I'm, you know what? Let you know what? Cause seeing is believing sometimes, and y'all be thinking I'm just, I just be capping. So this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go back and read a few more and then I'm gonna play a track for you that I did straight guitars here using the Boss Me 80. I'm telling you, it's just a, it's a game changer. You know what I'm saying? What strings do you use? I use Diodarios. I'm not endorsed by Diodarios, but if y'all got a plug, man, help your boy out. All right, cool. Um, love from India, that's what's up. Good morning, brother. I was about to get um, on the Rapture lesson from Vegas. It says, hope you and your family are doing well. Happy Thanksgiving. Right on, good morning. Sweet, sweet. I love that Les Paul with the trim. Yeah, man, it's a game changer. What strings do you use? I told you guys. Uh, how do you set your patches for R&B? So usually I like to have a little bit of reverb, no delay when I'm playing clean. Most of your producers, they, they want the stuff dry, but I like to have it just a little wet, not too, too crazy much. Um, and that's it. I, like, I like to have a little bit more warmer tone. So like, I like to have bass in there a little bit. Uh, the trebles and the mids are kind of like, you know, backed off a little bit. So I don't have it too thin. Um, I got one. Sweet, sweet. Hey, Smooth uh, gave a big shout out on Facebook. Oh, sweet. I appreciate that, John Smith. I appreciate that love, bro. Seriously, man. I appreciate that love. Um, if you had to pick between the Boss and the Helix, 
Uh, and you should get both because I have both. <laughs> it just depends, man. Honestly, love, it just depends. So for live settings, for like live tours and for live shows, I like the Helix a lot more. Uh, for just studio stuff, because it's, it's quick and it's convenient, it's a little bit more user-friendly for me. But what I tried to do, I like the Bossy Mi 80. So I like that I have both. So you know what I mean? Can you please show us a song that you can play in church? Uh, so if you want to know anything about gospel and stuff that you play in church, you should definitely sign up for Carrie's Camp because we have a gospel masterclass and everything that's available for you now. So it's Carrie's Camp. It's K-E-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. You should do it now because you can join for six months for 97 bucks and you have until Monday. But you don't want to wait till the last minute. If you wait till the last minute, I'm telling you, you're going to miss out. And then you're going to be trying to knock on the door. I'm going to be like, yo, we, we. Yo, I can't help you. You know what I'm saying? So like, do it now. I'm trying to tell you guys. We had some of the guys that are on the live right now that were, you know, on the fence or trying to figure out whatever. And they signed up last night or they signed up yesterday and they've been in it. They've been elbow deep in this stuff. So I want y'all to be elbow deep in this stuff too. All right. Um, let's go back and look at one more thing. It says, you about to make me join Carrie's camp. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, Anthony. Come on and join right now. All right. Uh, do -ka do do -ka do do -ka do where do you go to get um, the paint and the Supreme? Uh, oh, so so I, that was a, I, so I bought the strap. Actually, I wasn't bought the strap. I was gifted the strap from Fender when I was playing with another artist and I gutted it. Um, actually, before I put the pickups in, it didn't have anything on it, just whatever. So then I saw a couple friends of mine that were playing for like Ty Dollar Sign and some other people at the time. They had like uh, uh, stickers all on their strap. And I was like, yo, I love that stuff, but I want to have my own vibe. So I, I started to research put the stickers on, spray painted it, changed the pickups. And I love it, you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't you would imagine a person that could play R&B using that type of guitar. It just doesn't doesn't look like it's supposed to go, but I'm, I'm slaying them with it, you know what I mean? I'm slaying them with it. All right, cool. Have you, um, have you used the Line 6 pod? No, I have never used it. I've seen some other people use it, so it's cool. Um, you're welcome, you're doing an amazing job. I appreciate that, John, man, I really do. Awesome sauce. Uh, how do you go about getting endorsements for, by music companies if you don't have a huge following? So nine times out of 10 is probably not gonna happen. Let's get it because why a, a company is only going to endorse you when they feel like you can help market their brand. If you can't help market their brand or bring attention, doesn't re, it doesn't matter how phenomenal of a player you are, they're not gonna necessarily gift you a guitar because or equipment because they don't feel like you can help them sell their product. You know what I mean? So that's something to think about. So that's why it's really important. Um, and then also, too, another way that you can kind of get around that a little bit is if you develop relationships with like some of the people that are like these A&Rs or these um, these reps. If you develop relationships with those reps, it'll definitely help you out as well. Uh, to, to, what's a good affordable acoustic? The action of a mine is too hot. So if you're looking for a, an affordable acoustic, I would. I almost forgot about this, but Orangewood is a great acoustic guitar company to go get some guitars from that are like affordable and they sound great and they look great. Um, it says, I don't know if you notice, but it's YouTubers called the Church Guitarist that was inspired by your guitar stickers, all of your strats. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, I've, I've seen. A, I've actually did an interview with him, so yeah, I, I know him very well, which is cool. Uh, what was your first endorsement and how did you make it happen? What was my first endorsement? I think my first endorsement was MX Amps, MX11. And then it really just became because it was a brand new startup company. And I had a little bit, I'm talking about very minimal YouTube success. But I just, the gift of gab and also just relationship. I met him in person when he came to NAMP. And I was just like, yo, if you need somebody to demo your amps, I would love to do it. And that's how the relationship started. You know what I mean? All right, so for... Let me back up a little bit. So people were asking about like, yo, you use the Boss ME80. So here's me on a track. I'm gonna let you guys listen to a little bit of it, but I'm using the Boss ME80 for the whole thing. So here we go. That's all Boss ME80 guitars. I'm using the Strat. Killing them with the boss. Listen, I ain't trying to be funny, man. With the boss, man, is a problem, bro. Like, people be sleeping on that board, bro. Like, I'm killing them. Like, wait till I get ready to start soloing. Woo! Come on. 
come on, man. Oh, we're gonna stop right there. We're gonna stop. Cause I I can live I can legit be like, I'm so hyped. Because I remember when I first started like playing out live, I used to have the boss in me 20, uh, boss in me 50. And people used to laugh me off stage, like, what you gonna do with that? What you gonna do with that? Ah, da, 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 da. Cause we got these big old spaceships. I said, okay, cool. As soon as we strap up, they'd be like, oh my God, bro, your tone, everything. I'm like, yo, don't sleep on the equipment. Everybody didn't have the same budget. So for the guys that have a small budget that are trying to figure out like, yo, all I can afford is this, use what you have, man, and make, I'm telling you, you don't have to go out and spend all this money on these big old spaceships. Now, over time, you will you will get all this stuff. So I have all these big old spaceships back here. I've got the I've got plenty of pedal boards and I've got the Helix, I've got the Boston Me 80, I've got all types of stuff. But when it comes to recording, I use a small, simple setup. That's all that it is. Do you like quartet? Quartet is my foundation, bro. I love quartet. That's how I started playing when I was 14. I was playing out live. That's how I got the nickname Too Smooth from playing in quartet bands. You know what I'm saying? So I love it. So don't sleep on the Boss in Me 80, man. If you got that, whatever kind of board you got, and that's all you can afford, I'm telling you, learn the outs and ends of your equipment and you can be a game changer because the tone really is in your hand. The board just helps bring out different kind of tones. That's it. But the tone is in your hand. So don't forsake your hands over the equipment that you have. All right, let's go back. Um, I really like your content. Uh, what would you recommend to focus on for a guy that plays, uh, that's been playing guitar for four months now? So if you're in Carrie's camp, there's a roadmap. So I would highly suggest using the roadmap to help guide you along. So you know specifically what you need to be playing, where you should be at, at you know, months one through three, months uh, three through six, and so on. So use the roadmap to help guide you, okay? What kind of guitar is your light blue and white one? So the light blue one and white one, I guess it's a it's a it's a jazz master. It's made by Iconic Guitars. The name of that particular brand is called Elegante. Do you ever do finger exercises independently? Yes, all the time. R and B is really cool. Appreciate it. Sweet, sweet, sweet. All right, let's go back and look at some more of these. Um, Carry hype for the iron. Listen, I'm stay hype, bro. Stay Michael. I stay hype, bro, because it's going to be a great day. Who are your influences now? My influences now, uh, it's kind of changed. Jubal is always probably going to be one of my influences. Eric Walls is probably always going to be one of my influences. So I said like those two are like pretty much staples. You know what I mean? So they stay in there. Um... Thinking of either installing a Tremelo, which means taking a chunk of my guitar out, or a Bigsby. Uh, so the, the the Bigsby that I have installed on there, it's like you can take it on and off. So I don't know if you, I don't forget what it's called, whatever. My tech put it on because I didn't want to drill holes in my guitar. So maybe you could look into that. Uh, when you play out live for various artists, uh, if you ever met, would mess up, what would happen? Would you get called out? Uh, so gospel chops, everybody messes up. So the thing about it is you want to minimize it because you have so many rehearsals. Like when you're on tour, you li literally have 14 hour days rehearsals for like sometimes for a week, sometimes for a month, depending on the nature of the tour. So uh, making mistakes is kind of minimum. You'll, you'll talk about the shows every night. You'll talk about the things you want to get better. If you're having problems or issues, a lot of times like you'll, you'll address those in rehearsal like before sound check. Now, if it becomes more of an issue, then you will get replaced. They'll tell you like, bro. Listen, man, we gave you we gave you two shots, bro. You you effing up. Like, well, I'm sorry, we're gonna have to let you go and find somebody to replace you. Like, but for the most part, you have so many rehearsals that you're you're learning this music. You're you're really methodically going through this music. So it's not like we just give you music and then it's pretty much you gotta show up. Now there are certain situations like that. Now my first gig with Darulo was like that. I had one 14-hour rehearsal, then the next thing I know I was doing a two-hour show in Morocco. I had to figure out, you know what I'm saying? I had to fly from LA to Morocco, do the show. Spanish and jet lag and everything. So usually MDs kind of know what kind of guitar player you are, but for the most part, you have rehearsals. So like you're not just one of those where they're just kind of swinging it on you and throwing it on you, but you have to be prepared. You have to be ready. Okay. All right. Um, let's go back and look at it. Um, I've never used a Boss ME 70. I've only used an 80. But yeah, man, if you, you got the 70, bro, you can kick butt with that one too. One of the best guitars I know personally um, have every toy, uh, would you, would he use the Boston Me 80 for everything? Paul, 
Oh, sweet, sweet, sweet. I'm just trying to go back and read some of this stuff. Hype for the Tyson fight tonight. That's what's up. Um... Okay, Isaiah Sharkey. Sharkey is dope, man. Sharkey's a good friend of mine. But um, I don't look to Sharkey as an influence. We we approach guitar playing completely different. And then I, you know, like I, I'm gonna be honest with y'all and be very candid. So like for the the consumer, the guys that are here and whatever, you, you're wild by what Sharkey does. But like Sharkey is, he's like he's a hybrid. He's a unique person. Everybody can't play like that for every situation. You, you can't do that same approach on every gig. You can't do the Sharky approach on every gig. So he's a, he has a niche. That's why like, you know, like Sharky has some amazing gigs, don't get me wrong, but I'm saying like you can't use that for let's say if you're back playing in your hometown, it's just not going to work because musically everybody else that's around you doesn't they're not at that same level. Even when Sharky plays for uh the drum heads, you got Chris Dave, you sometimes you have Derek Hodge, like them dudes are at a whole nother level. Or he plays with um What's the dude on keys? Uh, Robert Glasper. Like, they're on a whole nother level. So you have to understand. You can watch and appreciate it, but, like, there are certain elements that you you can use and certain elements that you can't use because it's only specific to what he does. Um, how did you get to work at NAMM? Um, I had endorsements. That's how I got to work at NAMM. So... Uh, so I prefer a tremolo, but depending on the guitar. So like if it's a Strat, it's a tremolo all day. Like if it's a Jaguar um, or like a Jazzmaster, I like tremolos. But like certain guitars, I like to have a, a Bigsby. Money is tight now. Will you have this discount for Christmas? You know what? I don't know. I'll, I'll go back and talk to my team, but there's no time like the present. And I'm not trying to push you. I'm just saying there's no time like the present. If you can't um, physically do it, um, we have, you know, I'm saying YouTube. Jerry's Mosey, another guy. Like, I, I, J Mo's another good friend of mine. Like, super talented. Like, one of my guys I listen up to. Again, the stuff that he does, every guitar player that's paying attention, that's like standing on the sidelines, you can't use that for every gig. It does not work. This is something that he does, especially with the double stop movement, where he goes up and down the neck of the guitar. You can't pull that out on the gig. It's just not going to happen. Like, I'm, we could call on a spade a spade, bro. Like, you're not going to be able to put, pull that out on the gig. I love y'all, but you're not going to be able to do that. All right. Uh, what else? What else? What else? Um, how many healthy hours of practice per day would you recommend? It depends on what you. Your intention. So for me, like I'm a guy that loves what I do and I have time. So I can spend more time on my instrument than most people can. So honestly, I, I can't give you like if you do three hours a day, you're going to be great in six months. That's not how it works because it's about where you're focusing on the areas that you're weak in. So it depends on it may take you a little bit longer to do this versus do that. So you just got to focus in on the areas that you're weak in, use the time that you have and then manage the time that you have accordingly. Yeah, what works for you to Instagram doesn't work for a gig player. It's Nelson, you're speaking the truth. Now, you can pick the fish off the bone. You can take some of the concepts and ideas, but you can't do everything that they're doing. You have to understand, they've probably been recording this all over and over and over again to make sure it's right. So that's the reason why um, they're probably able to place that kind of stuff in that particular time frame. I do the same thing. You know, if you go and look at my Instagram and you look at some of my videos, be like, oh my God, not knowing some videos may take me 10 takes. To get one perfect video. It just is what it is. Do you know Jabari Johnson? I know Jabari very, very well. He's another good friend of mine. Um, where do I learn sick new uh, soul chord progressions? Nelson, if you want to learn that kind of stuff, you should definitely go check out Carrie's Camp because we have a video chord library that shows you how to put your own chords together and make your own stuff. So it's carriescamp.com slash 100. K-E-R-O-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. Okay. Uh... Melanie Faye is in the same box as Sharky, I think. <sighs> Let's get it. I love you, man, but like, no, not even close. And I know Melanie Faye, if you know me personally, I know Faye and I know Sharky personally. I've had Faye on. We talk, correspond all together. Sharky is in a class of his own. And I feel like we're talking sports now. But Sharky's in a class of his own, right? Listen, like Sharky's in a class of his own. Melanie Faye is great. She is talented. She is not a Sharky. She's not even close. Not even close. Because Sharky is like a hybrid. He's like a he's like a unicorn. There's only one of him. You know what I mean? So. Season greeting from Southern Illinois. That's what's up. Hope all is well. Peace and love to you too, Randy. Um, I've heard a guitar that you used to play as a Strat. Telly Jazzmaster thought about the switch. Any feedback 
on the type of guitar. Okay, I've heard of a guitar that can use uh, as a strat. To... All right, so Kwame, I would tell you, this is when it comes to it. You, what you have to ask yourself, what do you have to do? And also comfort level. If you can A-B these guitars, that's the best way for you to figure out what you like. I've determined like within the last, you know, year, two years or whatever, I realized that I love jazz master sounding guitars, fit, everything, whatever. So that's tend to where I, I like to lean, but like strats, tellies, they're all like staples. They've been staples for years. Like you can't go wrong with those. You know what I mean? So. All right. Um, if you spend half an hour each day techniques like got up to the sweep, you'll see fairly big improvement each week. Nelson, that's that could be true, but you could be practicing the wrong thing and still not see any improvement. So it just it, it depends. So you, I tell people all the time, practice and telling people what to practice is so generic because I don't know specifically what's what. So you could practice all those techniques and still be trash. It, it just happens. But so. Like even in sports, if you practice the wrong way, you're still going to be bad. So you have to practice what's right, the right fundamentals, the right techniques, have somebody help you show you, have a, a specific place to go so you can see how it's supposed to sound so you know how to keep growing. And if you have the more, if you have more time to really kind of put your hands in it and really learn it and play, then you definitely can learn it and play it. Some people learn in a short period of time. Everybody's on a different spectrum of how quick they can learn the music. Retention is key though. You got to re remember what you're doing, okay? Um, what do you consider, uh, you don't know anything about guitar. You can't really play any kind of chords. You can't play any scales. Um, you don't know where the chords are. You don't know the chord names. You don't know the chord voicing. So there's a lot to beginners. Like you can have the guitar for seven years and still be a, a beginner. Time does not determine if you're a beginner or not. So I, I've seen that a couple of times. Well, I had guitar for seven years. Can you play a C major seven chord? I don't know where C is that you're still a beginner, you know what I mean? Uh, when you play certain guitars, do you ever feel like one is more comfortable than like the other? Yeah, it happens plenty of times, you know, but it just depends if I'm doing session work, what does a producer need or what kind of sound am I trying to accomplish? You know, even when I'm playing a gig out live, whatever the record is, what kind of guitars did the producer use on the record? Or, you know, it just depends if I'm playing at church, there's all types of guitars. Now, some guitars can do multiple things. So I may use that kind of guitar, but if it's a specific thing, if it's a telly sound, I have to use a telly guitar. You know, if it's a strat sound, I have to use a strat guitar. If I don't have anything else, then I have to use what I got to use, but I got to try to make it as close as possible to sound like that. All right. Um, what do you think of her guitar playing? Her is phenomenal. So her real name is Gabby Wilson. And I met Gabby Wilson years and years ago before she was actually her. And Gabby is a beast, man. Like, listen, the stuff that she does and the style that she plays is phenomenal. I heard her play at SOBs in New York. Heard her play Purple Rain. Bruh, like, I ain't gonna lie to you. The whole crowd was in there, like, crying. Because she could, she could dig in, bro. So, like, yeah, Gabby Wilson is a beast, man. Um, it's not good to listen to a bunch of guitars for growth. Try. Yep, yep. I try to minimize who I listen to because it can be overwhelming. Very true. Very true. Amen about Sharky. True. Sharky is he's a unicorn, bro. Like, listen, I love y'all, but Sharky is a unicorn. You know what I'm saying? Uh, do, do. Big Chill Music. What did you say? I saw you said Pretty Please, but did you ask something else before? I don't know. I have to go back and look and see what you said. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, did you get influenced by guys like or Guthrie? No, never did. Never got influenced by Nile Rodgers either. Prince, probably later on in my career, I wasn't. I, I grew up in the church, so I wasn't exposed to a lot of those guys until like later on in my career. And there's certain things that Prince does that I like. There's certain things that I don't like. Just like that comes with any guitar player. There's certain things that like you know. Um, that maybe like, you know, Jimi Hendrix or Stevie Ray Vaughan or even, uh, you know, guys like, uh, you know, if it's just like, there's certain things that I like, certain things that I don't like. It's just personal preference, you know what I mean, when it comes to stuff like that. Do you get the platinum plaque for, let's get it, not yet, it's in the mail, it's in the mail, no shortcuts. Very smooth, John, very true, there's no shortcuts. I carry too smooth. Do guys, uh, do you do guys, do evaluation in Carrie's camp? 
to help. Yes, so Nelson, I definitely do. What I ask him to do is send me a video because that's the only way for me to know because you can tell me all that. You could be a good salesman. You can tell me whatever, but if I can't see it and hear it myself, then I can't actually, actually and effectively assess you. So I ask him to send me a video. I look at the video and I tell them where I think that they are. I've been playing long enough to know where I can be like, ah, you're, you're, you're strong in that area. You're not that strong in this area. This is how we can effectively get you to the place that you want to get. And I ask them what their goals are. If, you, if I know what your goals are, I can help push you in the right direction. Hey, brother. You mentioned this week, a week ago, a certain way, the best way to join the Carries Camp. So, Anthony, if you want to join Carries Camp, this is what all you need to do. Um, what you need to do is you need to go to Carries Camp, K-E-R-R-Y-S, K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. Met you at Kevin Wilson's Guitar Summit. You gave an awesome class. Oh, John, man, I appreciate that, man. I definitely appreciate that. When does the deal end? It ends on Monday. It ends on Monday. How do you get that tone? How do I get that tone? So if you want to know how I get my tone, you should definitely join Carrie's Camp. I have a whole segment where I talk about how to get that tone. Um, it's K-E-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. Would you recommend a Stratocaster over for a Baptist church? I love the telly um, look, but the Stratocaster feels more comfortable. Then gospel chops go with what feels more comfortable. You, you don't get, you know, and this is and this is no cap against nobody, but like you don't get any extra credit for having a guitar that think you think looks cool. You have to have a guitar that can play the gig, like to play the situation. So, by all means, I used to do, when I first started, I actually buy guitars because based upon how they looked. You gotta buy what's gonna like definitely help you do the job. So later on in your career, when you start to have a little bit more money, you're able to kind of flex and do whatever, then you can start to like buy guitars that look and sound the way you want them to sound. But nine times out of 10, like just go with what works, what feels comfortable because you have to play that, that church service, whether it be an hour, two hours or whatever the case, 90 minutes, whatever the case is, you have to play it. Uh, I, Anthony, I'm not a huge fan of the Kemper Profiler. I've only used it a couple times. I'm just saying, like, for me, I like stuff. I like amps, man. So, like, I like regular amps. It just depends on the setting. That's why I like the Helix, because I'm able to go direct to the front of the house. Um, it's just personal preference. We're talking about, like, do you like Ferraris or do you like Porsches? You know what I mean? They're all cars. They all do the same thing, so. Good morning. My fingers sometimes stick to the back of my maple neck strap. Uh, what can I do to smooth it out? Walter, you may have to take it to a shop and ask them to sand it down. It might be the lacquer on the back of the guitar, back of the neck of the guitar. You might have to sand that lacquer off. That's possibly what you could do. Uh, for R&B guitar, what is the best guitar um, for tone? Honestly, Anthony, like, bitch. That's a that's a tricky question. I mean, some people like Strat, some people like Telly, some people like Jazz Jazz Master, some people like uh, Les Pauls. I I say, for comfort level and for like the amount of stuff that you can do, I say like you can't go wrong with the Strat. You just can't go strong with the Strat. You can't go wrong with the Strat. I says when we getting carried to check out some of Tom Mitch. Uh, the chord progression is gorgeous. I don't know what keys and. I'll check it out, man. I'll check it out, Tomish. I'll check it out. It says, thank you. Great work. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. I believe you said in the past that vintage gear such as guitars and amps wasn't your mojo. I don't think I've ever said that. I just, I, I'm not going to go buy it, but I, I wouldn't say that it's not my mojo. Like, but I like what I like. You know what I mean? Like, just like you like what you like. You know what I mean? So I'm not one of these guys that's about to go spend like, 80 grand on a guitar that's from like 1965. I'm not doing that. I'm not going to no custom shop to get like a guitar that's from the 60s and pay that much money. That don't make sense to me. Like, nah, because then you can't necessarily, you can't play the guitar, you can't dig into the guitar the way you want to because you're trying to think about the pristine value of what the guitar is. And so I'm not about to do that. Yup, yup. All right, are there any campers in the house? If there's some campers that are on, please leave a comment and tell us how much you like Carrie's Camp. I definitely wanna hear from you. What's the most comfortable electronic guitar? Johnny, that's a question that you would have to figure out. Like, so you have to figure out what kind of guitars you like, and then what I would tell you to do is A, B them. So for me, like what I'll do is I'll play, if I like three guitars, 
I'll go to like a place like, let's say like a guitar center and I'll AB those guitars to see which one feels the best in my hand, which one gives me the playability. Roll Tide, Lauren, um, which one gives me the best playability, which one responds the way that I want to respond. Because each guitar, whether it looks great, may not respond, may not be able to do the things that I needed to do or wanted to do. So I try to find a guitar that can check a lot of those boxes for me. You know what I mean? Your top three right now for me is a Jazz Master. It's uh, depending on uh, what kind of strat. And then I like uh, PRS. Have you heard of Talk Box with Guitar? Yes, James. I just did an interview for that. Um, can you do Falling in Love for Jonathan Butler? So yes, I could definitely do it, but am I doing it today? I'm not doing it today, but I'll put it on the list. I have a lot of stuff that's on the list to get to, so I'm, I'm just saying, you know. Yeah, I'm a camper and I'm having fun with Spanky Alfred warm up. Sweet, I love it, I love it. That's so sweet and challenging, yes. I'm telling you, like for like most of my warm ups that I do, um, I usually use those when I'm doing sound check because they'll ask like, "Hey, guitar player, give me something," and like if it was my clean tone, and then when I have to dig in, then of course I'm trying to do something that's going to melt the paint off the walls. My cousin said I believe paid five grand for a Fender Strat. Not paying five grand for a Fender Strat. At least that's what I was told. No, that's true. I would get a Fender Strat Player Series or a PRS model and try to improve my craft with better gear. So like there's some custom shops, but I would never pay like for certain things like, you know, and that's just my personal preference. I'm not paying five grand for uh, a Strat since it's not happening. I'm not paying five grand for most guitars. The most I may pay for a guitar is maybe three. And if I'm doing three, then it either has to be a boutique shop. So I'm talking about like PRS, Tom Anderson, uh, some boutique, boutique shop like that. I'm not paying that much more money for a Strat. I don't care if it's a signature series or anything. I'm just not doing it. Uh, cool. So Johnny, I don't believe in tabs. So I believe in learning the fundamentals that's going to help you. So like we do have diagrams to show you what kind of chords we are, but I'm, I'm, I'm teaching my, my students how to like use their ears, use their memory, use their reference dots. You have to use all these potential things because when you're on a gig, you can't just throw tabs up and try to do the tabs with the song. Or sometimes they change the, the different format of flow. You got to be able to flow. And that's what I'm teaching you. I'm teaching you how to do all that stuff. Uh, can you play one of your warm-ups? Yes, John, I can play one of my warm-ups. Um, I think it was an original Strat, though. At the time, I wasn't playing guitar. Doesn't matter if it was an original Strat or not. I'm not paying five grand for a guitar. It's just not happening. 61, or if it was from the 54, I don't care. I'm still not doing it. <laughs> yeah, not doing it. Um, I just played um, We Will Rock You by Queen on a rock band. On your, it says on YouTube. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Strats, strats are iconic, inconsistent. Well, the thing about strats that are inconsistent, I agree with you. Um, they are definitely inconsistent. That's why I started to lean more towards PRSs because they're, I can grab usually whatever kind of guitar off. But once you get one strat and you actually work on it, and you fix it, you do it like how you're supposed to do it. It's, it's a it's a jewel. You know what I mean? So sweet. PRS hits the same quality mark almost every time. Sweet. Yep. I would love to see you carry. Play some Tosin guitars, um, black owned. Yeah, um, I mean, I would love to. Like, if Tosin sent me one of those tellies, I could definitely, like, we could rock it. You know what I'm saying? Sweet. What is your favorite PRS guitar? So, I, my favorite PRS guitar is the one that I lost in a car accident. So, I had a Custom 22, and I forget what year it was, but this thing was amazing. It had the turn where you had to turn for, like, the, the selectors, where instead of you having, like, the blade where you just go through or whatever. So that was one of my favorite ones um, that I use. I remember like it was yesterday. And I talked about it in an interview because I really love that guitar. All right, let's go ahead and get this warm up going. Then I have to get ready. No, I've never played the mirror. Mr. Carey, how about the custom 24? The 24. So I've, I've played a 24. I did not like it because it was just a little too thin for me. And then I wind up selling it. So the one I had that was like multicolored or whatever, I wind up selling it. So that's the one that I haven't, I, I sold. Mm -mm -mm.
I'm a happy camper. Sweet. Listen, I got it. I got it tatted on my arm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, happy camper. Sweet. I love the PRS Tremolo system. Yeah, they're they're phenomenal. I met Spanky as a teenager. That's what's up. <sighs> That's a few warm-ups. All right. I have to get ready to go. Because it's almost time for me to get ready. I got to go get my, my stuff together. So I love you guys. I'm going to read through a few more things. It says, do you know Alton? Yes, I know Alton very well. Alton will like troll me sometimes. Matter of fact, yesterday, Alton uh, trolled me and was like, yo, Carrie never gives me guitar lessons. I'm like, why do you need lessons from me, bro? You're a legend. What are you talking about? So yeah, I know Alton very well. Um, I'm a camper, sweet. He has lessons that you want. I said that you want lessons on. I says didn't know that you wanted or didn't know that you needed. That's what's up, Ed. That's what's up. So what's your favorite acoustic guitar? Um, a Taylor. I like the Taylor 714 CE. That's my favorite guitar. Uh, I've seen people buy hella expensive bone nuts for their guitars, laugh out loud. I don't know what the difference would be. I don't know either. Hey man, from Hawaii, yo, yo, that's what's up. L listen, when I retire, I would love to live in Maui because I want to wear like flip flops and shorts like every day. So that's what's up, that's what's up. It says, thank you for helping for so much for your lessons. It says, I had to get through the tough days caring for Ellie parents, I appreciate it. I have a question. Uh, do you use a looper pedal? I don't, but if you, you're you going to use one, I think the Ditto is a really good one. Um, when did you know you were a good, good enough guitar player? When I knew exactly what I was doing on the guitar. I mean, before I, was, before I knew exactly what I was doing, I was decent enough to where I could play out live. But if somebody was like, yo, what are you playing? I, had, I was a deer in the headlights. I could not tell you. Yo, hey, from Croatia. Yo, I definitely want to go to Split. So... Listen, if they if they need they want to do a clinic over there, my bro, like help me, help me get over there. I'm trying to figure out how to get over there. Uh, 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 uh Ditto was okay, but does not have quantizer. I've never played it. I've just seen a lot of people use it, so you know what I'm saying. Big fan from South Africa. That's what's up. That's what's up. People in the house. Bum, bum, ba -da, bum, bum, ba -da. Split is the killer place. Yeah, I've seen the videos. Um, I've seen pictures. So a good friend of mine um, went over there, and I saw some of the pictures on Instagram. I was like, bro, I'm mad jealous right now. I got to figure out how to get over there, man. Sweet. Been watching your lessons. That's what's up. What's up? All right, cool, cool. Well, I love you guys, man. You guys be great. Cheers from the Philippines. Listen, um, if you're brand new to this channel, please go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell to be notified. If you want to know more about Carrie's Camp, Carrie's Camp is just, it's the flagship to really learn how to play guitar, specifically R&B, Neo Soul, Gospel. We have so many bonuses like the Gospel Guitar Master Classes. Um, we have the uh, R&B Acoustic Series. We also have um, the video core library. We do a live Q and A every first of the month. We have Carrie's corner and the list goes on and on. There's so many bonuses and to celebrate the fact that I reached hundred thousand subscribers, I opened it up, um, where you can get in for 97 bucks. You have until Monday for 90, um, you can get in for six months for $97. Listen, this is a steal. I've seen people who were on the lives that just joined and are phenomenal, like grateful that they were like, they got access to it. So I'm telling you now because 
There's a lot of questions that you guys were asking. I was like referring you to go to Carrie's camp. I'm not just saying that just because I'm just saying it. I'm saying it because it's going to definitely help you grow in your craft. And I'm one of these guys when I teach you, I'm not teaching you, oh, you just play that and I'm going to play this. No, I'm showing you exactly what I do. And I've been playing guitar for forever. And I've played with the likes of Jason Derulo, with Sean Kingston, with Chrisette Michelle, Melanie Fiona, Ty Dolla Sign, 2 Chains. I played with Tori Kelly. I played with um, Lettucey, Chrisette Michelle. I mean, I played with a host of different, different genres at the highest level. I've been on TV. I've been in magazines. I've been on stages literally all around the world. My passport, and there's no cap, I got probably more stamps than a lot of people and their passports. And I've had to get different passports to get more pages because I've gotten so many stamps. So to say that, to say this, I'm not trying to toot my own horn, but I'm just saying like, I know what I'm talking about. I've done this for a very long time and I want to help you. Like I'm, I get no other pleasure than to try to help see you guys be great. And I want to see you guys supersede what I do. Like I want to look up one day and then turn on the TV and see you guys, see my campers playing, performing on daytime TV shows, late night TV shows, or whatever the case may be, and just say like, oh, I get an email like, yo, I got a show in Atlanta, or I got a show here, come check me out. That's what I want. That's what it's all about. It's not about me trying to be like, I'm the guy, I'm going to keep y'all down. No. And I'm, I'm going to say this as I close. Jules the Wolf and plays for Bieber was a student of mine a long time ago. He's playing for Bieber, one of the biggest artists in the world. And Jules can play circles around me. Now, I'm a great player. I ain't trying to be funny, but Jules can play circles around me. And I don't feel no type of way. The fact that he is on the biggest stage, that's what I love. I want to be like, yo, whenever he's in town, I'm like, yo, man, if you got a ticket, bro, let me know. I want to come check y'all out. So that's what it's all about. So I definitely want to help you guys grow in your craft, learn how to unpack the, bat, um, the, the fretboard. So if you want to join Carrie's camp, Go to K-E-R-Y-S-K-A-M-P dot com slash 100. I love you guys. You guys have a great one and roll tide.